investing to become a millionaire. The best investment you can make is in yourself. There are more millionaires around than you think. Did you know that there are over 22 million millionaires in the United States alone? That's a huge number. When we think of millionaires, we often picture people who are in the spotlight. Famous actors, athletes, or tech entrepreneurs who dominate the headlines. Because the media often focuses on these high-profile figures, it can create the impression that becoming a millionaire is something reserved for a lucky few, making it seem nearly impossible for everyday people like us. But here's the reality. You don't need to be famous or invent the next big thing to become a millionaire. Most millionaires are ordinary people. You might be surprised to learn that the majority of millionaires are actually regular, everyday people. Most of them aren't making six or seven figure incomes. They're not living in extravagant mansions or driving luxury cars. Instead, they've built their wealth through careful planning, smart financial decisions, and steady progress over time. So what's their secret? It all comes down to a few key principles that anyone can follow. Common sense and discipline are key. One, common sense financial habits. Millionaires tend to live below their means. They're not overspending on things they don't need. Instead, they focus on saving and investing their money wisely. Two, discipline in saving. Regular saving, even in small amounts, can add up over time. Many millionaires have been consistent in setting aside money for the future, regardless of their income level. Three, smart investments. Millionaires know the value of investing. They understand that growing wealth isn't just about saving money, it's about making that money work for you through investments that build over time. Yes, you can become a millionaire too. Becoming a millionaire isn't reserved for the rich and famous. With common sense, discipline, and some basic financial strategies, you too can achieve millionaire status, even on an average income. The journey may take time, but the path is straightforward if you stay committed. In short, most millionaires are proof that wealth building is possible for anyone who approaches it with the right mindset. The first step toward becoming a millionaire may seem intimidating, especially when you consider the large goal of $1 million alongside a modest monthly savings plan. But the key to building wealth lies in understanding one of the most powerful forces in investing, compound returns. The power of compound returns. So what exactly are compound returns? Imagine that you earn interest or returns on your initial investment, and then in the following periods, your returns start to generate additional returns on top of the original amount. It's like a snowball rolling down a hill. What starts small gradually builds momentum and grows larger over time, even if you don't add any more snow. Let's break it down with an example. Suppose you invest $1,000 and earn a 10% return over the course of a year. By the end of the first year, your $1,000 grows to $1,100, an increase of $100. Now, in the second year, you earn the same 10% return, but this time it's on the larger $1,100. At the end of the second year, you'll have $1,210, earning $110 in the second year. Notice how you earned more in the second year, even though the return rate stayed the same. That's the magic of compounding in action. Compounding without constant contributions. One of the most exciting aspects of compound returns is that your investment grows without needing you to continuously add money. However, consistently contributing to your investment increases the amount on which you earn returns, so your wealth grows even faster. Regular contributions allow you to supercharge the effects of compounding. How compounding can make you a millionaire? Let's explore how you could use compounding to reach the $1 million mark. A key factor in this process is understanding how much time you have and what rate of return you expect. Historically, a balanced investment portfolio of 80% stocks and 20% bonds has provided an average annual return of 9.4% since 1926. However, inflation has averaged around 2.9% during the same period. To make our calculations more realistic, we'll assume an inflation-adjusted return of 6.5%. This means the returns we talk about are in today's dollars, accounting for inflation. 
The time you have to save plays a major role in determining how much you need to set aside each month to reach $1 million. The shorter your time frame, the more you'll need to save each month. But the longer you have to invest and allow compounding to work, the less you need to contribute. Let's look at some examples. 10-Year Time Frame If you want to become a millionaire in just 10 years, you'd need to save about $6,000 per month. For most people, this is unrealistic. 20-Year Time Frame However, if you extend the investment period to 20 years, the monthly amount you need to save drops to $2,075. This is still quite a large number, but it's significantly less than the 10-year scenario. The longer you give your investments time to grow, the more you benefit from compounding returns. Each additional year you invest reduces the amount you need to save monthly because your earnings begin to generate even more earnings, which can snowball into substantial wealth over time. The key takeaway. The path to becoming a millionaire doesn't require massive savings overnight. Instead, it's about starting early and allowing the magic of compound returns to work for you. By contributing consistently over time, your investments will grow faster as the years go by, putting you on the road to wealth. The sooner you start, the more time your money has to grow through compounding, and the closer you'll be to reaching your goal of $1 million. Simple interest versus compound interest. A deeper look. Interest is a fundamental concept in finance and understanding how it works can have a profound impact on your financial health. There are two main types of interest, simple interest and compound interest. Each functions differently, affecting how much you earn on savings or owe on loans over time. What is simple interest? Simple interest is the most straightforward type of interest calculation. It is based solely on the principal amount, the initial amount of money you invest or borrow. The formula for calculating simple interest is a equals P1 plus RT, the total amount after interest, P, the principal amount, initial investment or loan, R, annual interest rate as a decimal, T, time in years. The key characteristic of simple interest is that the interest earned does not get added back to the principal. This means that each year you earn the same amount of interest and the total remains unchanged. Example of simple interest. Let's say you have $1,000 in a savings account that earns 5% simple interest annually using the formula A equals 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.05 times 2. After two years, you would have earned $50 per year, totaling $1,100. Each year, the interest stays fixed with no additional gains from the interest you've already earned. What is compound interest? Unlike simple interest, compound penalt allows you to earn interest on both the principal and the interest previously earned. This interest on interest effect causes your money to grow at an accelerating pace. The formula for calculating compound interest is more complex. A equals P, 1 plus frac R, N, right, N, T. A, total amount after interest. P, principal amount, annual interest rate as a decimal. N, number of times interest is compounded per year. Time in years. The beauty of compound interest lies in its compounding frequency whether interest is compounded daily, monthly, or annually. The more frequently the interest compounds, the faster your balance grows. Example of compound interest. Imagine you invest $5,000 in an account that earns 5% interest compounded monthly for 10 years. The formula would look like this. A equals 5,000 frac 0 0.05 12 times 10 equals 8,238.35. In 10 years, your balance would grow to $8,238.50. This includes your original $5,000 investment and $3,238.35 in interest. This is significantly more than what you would have earned with simple interest. Hashtar. Key differences between simple and compound interest. 1. Interest on principal versus interest on interest. With simple interest, you only earn interest on the initial amount. With compound interest, you earn on both the principal and the accumulated interest. Two, growth over time. Simple interest results in a linear growth of your investment or loan balance. Compound interest leads to exponential growth, allowing balances to grow faster over time. Three, short-term versus long-term impact. Simple interest is typically used in short-term loans like car loans. 
Compound interest is more commonly applied to long-term investments, savings accounts, and loans like mortgages. Making compound interest work for you. When it comes to saving, you want your accounts to take advantage of compound interest. Here's how you can maximize your gains. 1. Start early. The earlier you begin saving or investing, the longer your money has to grow. Time is your best ally when it comes to compounding. 2. Increase compounding frequency. Accounts that compound interest more frequently, e.g. daily or monthly, will grow your savings faster than accounts that compound annually. 3. Make regular contributions. Adding to your balance consistently, even with small amounts, enhances the power of compounding. Example, compounding with regular deposits. Let's say you open a savings account with a $5,000 initial deposit, earning 5% compounded monthly. If you add $100 to the account every month, after 10 years, you would have equal FV left frac 0 0.5 12, 12 times 10, 105,000 zero, right? Equals 20,763. By consistently adding to your account, your balance would grow to $23,763 after 10 years. Avoiding compound interest pitfalls in debt. Just as compound interest can help your savings grow, it can also work against you if you're borrowing money. Credit cards, student loans, and mortgages all commonly use compound interest, which can make balances grow quickly if you don't pay them off. Credit cards. If you don't pay off your full balance each month, the interest compounds on what you owe. This can lead to a snowball effect, where debt accumulates faster than you can pay it down. Pro tip. Compare APYs. When comparing savings accounts or loans, always check the annual percentage yield APY instead of the annual percentage rate APR. APY takes into account the effect of compounding, giving you a more accurate picture of what you'll earn or owe. The bottom line, whether you are saving or borrowing, understanding the difference between simple and compound interest is crucial. Compound interest can supercharge your savings by growing your money exponentially over time. However, it can also cause debt to balloon if you aren't careful. The key is to take advantage of compounding in your savings and investments while working aggressively to pay down any compounded debt. In short, when saving, aim for accounts with frequent compounding, and when borrowing, try to pay off debts quickly to minimize the negative effects of compounding. Accounting for the impact of fees, a crucial investment consideration. When planning your investment strategy, it's vital to account for the impact of fees on your returns. Many investors overlook this, thinking small fees won't make a significant difference. However, over time, even seemingly minor fees can erode your wealth substantially, especially when compounded over many years. If you choose to invest in low-cost index funds, which typically have minimal fees, the effect on your long-term returns will be negligible. These types of funds are designed to track the performance of a broader market index, and their fee structures are among the lowest, often ranging from 0.05% to 0.3%. This means more of your money stays invested, growing over time. But not all investors take this route. Many seek professional financial advice or invest in actively managed mutual funds, which come with significantly higher fees. These fees can dramatically alter the course of your financial goals. The impact of advisory fees. Let's break it down with an example. Imagine an investor who pays a financial advisor a 1% annual fee to manage their portfolio. While 1% may not seem substantial at first glance, its long-term impact can be profound. For instance, if your goal is to accumulate $1 million for retirement, the amount you need to save monthly increases considerably once this fee is factored in. Why? Because that 1% fee is subtracted from your returns every year. This means your investments need to work harder just to keep up. The power of compound growth, the idea that your earnings can generate even more earnings over time, is reduced by the constant drag of fees. The added cost of expensive mutual funds. Now, consider if your advisor also recommends actively managed mutual funds, which often charge an additional fee, sometimes around 1% or more. Now the total fee is 2 cent, 1% for the advisor and another 1% for the mutual fund. This combination could significantly alter your savings strategy. Let's illustrate this with some numbers. 
Without any fees, reaching a $1 million goal may require a certain monthly savings rate. But with a 2% annual fee, the amount you need to save each month skyrockets. The reason is simple. The more you pay in fees, the less money you have working for you in the market. The cumulative effect over time. To truly grasp the impact, think about the compounding effect of fees. Every year, the fee takes a bite out of your returns, and the following year, you have a smaller base on which to earn. This compounding of fees creates a snowball effect, growing larger over time, and cutting into your returns exponentially. What might seem like a small annual percentage can add up to tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars over the lifetime of your investments. As you can see, investment fees, even ones that seem insignificant at first, can significantly reduce your wealth accumulation potential. Conclusion. When evaluating your investment options, always consider the fees involved. Whether you're paying an advisor, using actively managed funds, or sticking to low-cost index funds, understanding how fees impact your investments is essential to achieving your financial goals. Remember, the less you pay in fees, the more money stays invested, allowing the power of compounding to work in your favor. Understanding the fundamentals of investing, growing wealth and generating income. What is investing? At its core, investing is the act of putting your money into assets with the expectation that they will grow in value over time, allowing you to earn a return. These returns might come in the form of income, such as dividends or interest, or through capital gains, which occur when you sell an asset for more than you paid for it. In a broader sense, investing can also involve dedicating time, energy, or resources to improving your quality of life or making a positive impact on others. However, in financial terms, investing refers to purchasing assets like stocks, bonds, real estate, and commodities with the goal of achieving profits or generating steady income. How does investing work? Investing operates on a simple principle. Buy low, sell high. You purchase an asset at a certain price with the hope that its value will rise over time. When you sell it for more than you paid, the difference is called a capital gain. For instance, if you buy a stock at $50 and sell it later for $70, you've realized a capital gain of $20. When the value of an investment increases between the time you purchase it and sell it, this is called appreciation. Appreciation can occur in many types of assets. Let's look at some examples. Stocks. If a company launches a successful product, its revenue might increase, leading to a rise in the stock's value. Bonds. If you own a corporate bond with a 5% interest rate, and the same company later issues bonds offering only 4%, your bond becomes more attractive to other investors, potentially increasing its market value. Commodities. A commodity like gold might appreciate if the value of the US dollar declines, increasing demand for gold as a safer investment. Real estate. A home could appreciate in value if you renovate it or if the surrounding neighborhood becomes more desirable. Apart from capital gains, another way investments generate returns is through income. Income investing focuses on assets that provide regular cash flow, like dividends from stocks or interest from bonds. In this case, rather than selling the asset for a profit, you hold on to it while benefiting from the periodic payments it provides. Basic types of investments. There are several categories of investments, each with its own risk and reward profile. Understanding these can help you determine where to allocate your funds based on your goals and risk tolerance. One, stocks. Stocks represent ownership in a company. When you buy shares of a company's stock, you essentially own a piece of that company. If the company does well, its stock price may rise, leading to potential capital gains. Additionally, some companies pay dividends, which are a portion of their profits distributed to shareholders. However, stocks can be risky because their value fluctuates based on the company's performance and market conditions. Two, bonds. Bonds are a form of debt. When you buy a bond, you're lending money to a company or government. In return, you receive interest payments over time and get back the principal amount you lent at the bond's maturity date. Bonds are considered less risky than stocks because of their fixed income, but they aren't without risk, especially if the bond issuer has poor credit and might default. Three, 
Commodities. Commodities include raw materials like gold, oil, and agricultural products. Their prices are driven by supply and demand. For example, if weather conditions destroy wheat crops, wheat prices could spike. Commodities can be risky investments due to their price volatility. Investors often trade commodities through futures and options, which can amplify both gains and losses. 4. Real Estate Real estate investments involve buying property, such as houses, buildings, or land, with the hope that their value will increase over time. Real estate can provide both capital gains and rental income. Factors like the economy, crime rates, and local development can significantly affect property values. For those not wanting the responsibility of direct ownership, real estate investment trusts REITs, offer a way to invest in real estate without managing the properties. More 5. Mutual Funds and ETFs These are collections of stocks, bonds, and other assets grouped together. When you invest in mutual funds or exchange-traded funds ETFs, you're buying into a diversified portfolio. This diversification reduces risk compared to owning individual securities. Mutual funds are often actively managed by professionals who aim to outperform a particular market index. Because of this active management, mutual funds tend to have higher fees. ETFs are passively managed and aim to mirror the performance of a specific index, like the S&P 500. ETFs usually have lower fees than mutual funds and tend to be a more cost-effective way to invest. Conclusion Investing is an essential way to build wealth over time, and understanding how different types of investments work is key to making informed decisions. Whether you're looking to grow your capital through appreciation, generate income, or a combination of both, the right investment strategy depends on your financial goals, time horizon, and tolerance for risk. Diversifying your investments across different asset classes, stocks, bonds, real estate, and commodities, can help you manage risk while maximizing potential returns. Mastering Risk and Reward, a Thoughtful Approach to Investing. Investing can be one of the most effective ways to grow your wealth over time, but it comes with an important factor you must understand and manage. Risk. As you venture into investing, learning how to balance risk and reward is essential to making informed decisions that fit your financial goals. To start, it's crucial to understand that different investments come with different levels of risk. Understanding risk and return. When we talk about risk in investing, it refers to the possibility of losing some or all of your invested money. However, taking on more risk often presents the potential for higher returns. The basic principle is that higher risk investments, like stocks, tend to offer higher potential rewards, but they are also more volatile, meaning their value can fluctuate significantly in the short term. On the other hand, low risk investments, like government bonds, offer more stability but tend to grow your money more slowly. To give you a clearer picture, think of the stock market. It can experience sharp rises, but also sudden dips, sometimes losing a significant amount of value in a short period. The key to success in high-risk investments is time. If you are investing for a long-term goal, such as retirement, you have more time to ride out those short-term losses. For instance, over the past 100 years, despite various economic downturns, the S&P 500 has provided an average annual return of about 10%. However, if you had needed your money during a market dip, you would have experienced losses, which brings us to the importance of planning. Gauging your risk tolerance. To invest wisely, you need to determine how much risk you're willing and able to take on, a concept called risk tolerance. Your risk tolerance is influenced by several factors, including your financial situation, your investment goals, and your emotional comfort with uncertainty. Higher risk tolerance. If you're comfortable with seeing your investments fluctuate and are more focused on long-term growth than short-term stability, you likely have a higher risk tolerance. You may be okay with temporary losses because you believe the market will recover and generate better returns in the long run. Lower risk tolerance. If you prefer a more steady, predictable rate of return with fewer ups and downs, you likely have a lower risk tolerance. You may prioritize protecting your capital and avoid the emotional stress of watching your investments lose value, even if it means slower growth. Matching risk to your goals. 
Your risk tolerance should align with your investment goals. If you're saving for a distant goal, such as retirement in 30 years, you can afford to take on more risk because you have plenty of time to recover from any short-term losses. That's why financial advisors often recommend younger people take on more risk in their portfolios. They can afford to be more aggressive because their long investment horizon allows them to weather downturns in the market. However, if your goal is more immediate, such as buying a house in a few years, you may want to focus on safer, low-risk investments. A sharp market drop could severely reduce the money you've saved when you need it most, leaving you short on your goal. The importance of diversification. No matter your risk tolerance, one of the most powerful ways to manage risk is through diversification. Diversification is a strategy that involves spreading your investments across a variety of asset types, such as stocks, bonds, and real estate, as well as across different industries and geographical regions. This way, if one investment performs poorly, others may perform well, balancing out your portfolio and protecting your overall returns. Let's look at an example. If your entire portfolio is made up of bonds and the bond market declines, you could lose a significant portion if you have a diversified portfolio with some money in stocks, um, some in bonds, and maybe some in real estate. Your losses in bonds may be offset by gains in stocks or other assets. By spreading your investments across different areas, you reduce the risk of a single event negatively affecting your entire portfolio. Diversification is a fundamental principle of sound investing and can help smooth out your returns over time. How to begin your investment journey. Now that you understand how risk and diversification work, you might wonder, how do I actually start investing? Fortunately, getting started with investing is easier than ever, and you don't need a lot of money to begin. 1. Robo-Advisors If you're looking for an easy, hands-off way to invest, robo-advisors are a great option. These automated platforms build and manage a diversified portfolio for you based on your financial goals and risk tolerance. They require minimal effort on your part and often have low fees, making them ideal for beginner investors with a small amount of money to invest. 2. Online brokerage accounts If you prefer a more hands-on approach, you can open an online brokerage account. This allows you to choose and manage your own investments, from individual stocks and bonds to mutual funds and ETFs. For beginners, mutual funds and ETFs are great choices because they offer automatic diversification. 3. Financial Advisors if you'd rather have personalized guidance, working with a financial advisor might be the right path. An advisor can help you develop a custom investment plan that aligns with your risk tolerance and long-term goals. They can also offer ongoing advice and adjustments as your financial situation changes over time. The power of starting early and staying consistent. A key to building wealth through investing is starting as early as possible and consistently contributing to your portfolio. Regular investing, even if it's just a small amount each month, helps you take advantage of market fluctuations through a strategy known as dollar cost averaging. When you invest consistently, you buy more shares when prices are low and fewer when prices are high, which can lower your average cost per share over time. Additionally, consistently investing allows you to avoid the common pitfall of trying to time the market. Some of the biggest stock market gains occur shortly after large losses, so if you sell in a panic, you might miss out on the recovery. For example, over the last 30 years, the S&P 500 has provided a 10% annualized return, but if you missed just the 25 best days in that period, your return would have been cut in half. Staying invested through the highs and lows is crucial to long-term success. Building a strong financial foundation. Before you dive into investing, it's important to make sure you have a solid financial foundation. This includes having an emergency savings fund, managing your debts, and understanding your retirement savings options. Once you have these basics in place, you can start investing with confidence, knowing that your financial house is in order. Investing is a powerful tool for building wealth and securing your financial future. While no investment is completely risk-free, understanding how to manage risk through diversification, gauging your risk tolerance, and consistently investing over time will set you on the path to success.
Start learning today, begin investing early, and let your money work for you over the long term. Your future self will thank you. Maximizing Employer 401k Matching Contributions A Key Strategy for Building Millionaire Retirement Savings Saving for retirement can feel like an enormous task, but the good news is you don't have to go it alone. Many employers offer a powerful tool to accelerate your journey toward financial independence, the employer match. In fact, according to Fidelity, about 85% of retirement plans offer an employer match on employee contributions to a 401k or similar retirement accounts. This can significantly boost your savings over time, potentially even helping you become a millionaire. Imagine this, for every dollar you contribute to your 401k, your employer may match part or all of it. A common matching formula is a 50 cents for every $1 contributed, up to 6% of your salary. Some employers are even more generous, matching dollar for dollar up to a certain percentage. What does this mean in real terms? Let's break it down. If you're contributing $500 a month to your 401k and your employer matches 50% up to 6% of your salary, you could see an additional $100 to $200 per month in your retirement account. Over time, this additional contribution could add tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars to your nest egg. It's like getting free money to help you achieve your financial goals faster. For example, let's say you earn $50,000 a year and are contributing $450 and $50 a month to your 401k to build a retirement balance of $1 million in 40 years. If your employer offers a dollar-for-dollar -dollar match on contributions up to 6% of your salary, you'd receive an additional $250 a month. This extra contribution would reduce your time to millionaire status from 40 years to just 34 years. Now, if you continue saving and working for the full 40 years, your employer's match could help you grow your retirement savings to nearly $1.6 million. That's the power of compounding. Small, Consistent contributions combined with an employer's match can dramatically accelerate your financial progress. Avoid the trap of lifestyle debt. While your employer's match can propel you forward, lifestyle debt can drag you down just as quickly. Lifestyle debt is the kind of borrowing we do to maintain or upgrade our standard of living, often using credit cards to finance non-essential purchases like vacations, dining out, or the latest gadgets. Debt in itself isn't inherently bad. Taking on debt for meaningful investments such as a home or education can be a smart decision. But high interest debt from lifestyle purchases is a major barrier to building wealth. This kind of debt typically offers no long-term value and can quickly spiral out of control, making it harder to save and invest for your future. The key to reaching millionaire status isn't just about making smart investments, it's also about avoiding unnecessary financial setbacks. Reducing lifestyle debt gives you more freedom to save and invest consistently, allowing your money to work for you rather than against you. The reality of financial planning, be prepared for the unexpected. Of course, no financial plan is foolproof. While tools like employer matches and disciplined savings are powerful, the financial landscape is unpredictable. Our analysis, for instance, assumes a certain rate of return after inflation, often based on historical averages. However, there's no guarantee that the next few decades will deliver the same results. Market downturns, inflation spikes, or changes in your personal situation could impact your ability to hit your financial goals. Take inflation as an example. It may rise more than expected, eroding the purchasing power of your retirement savings. Or your rate of return might be lower than historical averages, meaning your investments grow more slowly than planned. And of course, life happens. Unexpected expenses, job changes, or health issues can all disrupt even the most well-thought-out financial strategies. As legendary boxer Mike Tyson once said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. The key to financial success is resilience. Understanding that setbacks are part of the journey and adapting accordingly. Even if you don't hit the exact target you set for yourself, you can still make tremendous progress toward financial security. For instance, let's say your portfolio only grows to $750,000 by retirement instead of the $1 million you aimed for. 
While it may feel like a shortfall, $750,000 is still a substantial amount of money that will allow you far more financial flexibility than if you had never saved or invested at all. The most important thing is that you are taking steps toward building wealth, no matter what the final number looks like. Conclusion Keep the big picture in mind. Your employer's match is one of the most powerful tools available to help you grow your retirement savings. By maximizing this benefit, staying disciplined about saving and avoiding lifestyle debt, you can significantly increase your chances of becoming a millionaire. While there are no guarantees in financial planning, taking advantage of opportunities like an employer match, staying mindful of potential setbacks, and remaining flexible in your approach will keep you on the right track. Even if the exact timeline or amount changes, what matters most is that you're building a future of financial security and independence. Achieving financial freedom. The idea of becoming a millionaire is undeniably attractive, but it's important to realize that the ultimate goal should not simply be to accumulate wealth for the sake of reaching a symbolic number like $1 million. Instead, focus on achieving financial freedom, the point where your investments and passive income are enough to support your desired lifestyle without the need for continuous work. For some, this may mean surpassing the million dollar mark, while for others, it could mean much less. The key is understanding your own financial needs and defining what true freedom looks like for you. To do this, start by calculating how much you'll need to save for retirement based on your goals. Consider your future expenses, lifestyle, and the time horizon until you stop working. Financial freedom, after all, is highly personal. Our guide can help you pinpoint the amount of money you need to ensure a comfortable retirement. Key strategies for building wealth. Regardless of whether your target is to join the Two Comma Club or simply retire comfortably, the principles of wealth building remain the same. Here's what you should focus on. One, save and invest early and consistently. Time is your greatest ally when it comes to building wealth. By starting early, even small contributions to your savings can grow into significant sums thanks to the power of compound interest. Regular, consistent investments, whether in stocks, real estate, or other assets, will allow your money to work for you, growing over time without constant effort on your part. Two, keep an eye on fees. While investing is crucial, you must be mindful of the hidden costs that can erode your returns. High management fees, excessive transaction costs, and poorly timed investment decisions can chip away at your gains. Be intentional about choosing low-cost investment options and monitoring where your money is going. 3. Avoid lifestyle inflation. One of the biggest obstacles to financial success is lifestyle debt. As your income increases, it can be tempting to upgrade your lifestyle, buying a bigger home, a fancier car, or spending more on luxuries. However, these decisions often lead to increased debt, which hinders your ability to save and invest. Instead, aim to keep your lifestyle modest compared to your income so that more of your money can be put to work for your future. The power of compound interest. When you combine these principles, saving early, investing consistently, avoiding unnecessary fees, and steering clear of lifestyle inflation, you allow compound returns to do the heavy lifting. Compound interest means your money earns returns not only on your original investment, but also on the interest or gains that your investment accumulates over time. The longer you stay invested, the more powerful this effect becomes. This is why starting early and staying the course, even through market fluctuations, is essential. In the end, becoming a millionaire is not just about hitting a specific financial milestone. It's about building a life of financial security and freedom, where you can focus on what truly matters to you without the constant pressure of financial concerns. By following these strategies, you'll be well on your way to achieving the financial future you desire.